I recently built this little tool stand here and actually I'm still building it and the last coat of finish is drying at the moment. But this will soon need some adjustable leveling feet. Now shopping for something like this is quite difficult because I couldn't find any that are very good and affordable. So I'm going to make them myself. First you will want to find a scrap piece of plywood, divide that into four pieces and mark the centers. The circles then get somehow cut out. The bandsaw is the best tool in my case. I also decided to use my rotor table circle jig and a chamfering bit to make it look a little nicer. Next is making some steel plates. You could use some flat stock, but I have a few old angle brackets laying around and they work as well. After the rough cutting, I smooth the edges with a big file and a grinder. Then marking the center, punching it and drill a hole into it. I use a step drill here. The final hole should be the size for tapping afterwards. After that I drilled holes in the corners for mounting screws. And then also drilled some holes for mounting screws in a washer. Next is tapping the hole in the middle with M12. Now M12 taps come in a set of three. This is the first cutter and I'm starting this at the drill press to make sure everything is perpendicular. Unfortunately I don't have a big tap holder so a vice grip will do. A tap this size fortunately doesn't break that easily. Each of the taps cuts a little bit more of the threads so you don't have to do it all at once. Alright with the metal pieces now fabricated we can go on. Per foot you will need one of each, one wooden foot one bolt with threads all the way through, in my case it's M12 as I already mentioned, and two nuts. Next we need to measure the bolt head from corner to corner and search a drill bit that is a little bit bigger than that. In my case it's 22 millimeters and with that I now drill a hole into the foot. The hole needs to be as deep so that the full head of the bolt is sunken in. Now there are two versions how you can make the feet. In the first version the bolt will be able to spin freely in the hole, in the second version it will be locked. Making them is almost the same. Next comes a washer with the holes and then a nut. For the first version you would just want to hand tighten this nut so that you can still move the washer freely. And then thread on a second nut and then you tighten these nuts against each other. The washer is then still able to spin freely. For the second version you just tighten the nut against the bolt as hard as you can. As you can see when you now would mount the washer, this one can still spin freely, and this one cannot. The next step is the same for both, drilling a hole through the nut and bolt for a cross pin. And once that's done on this version you can remove the second nut again and then the nut is locked in place and this will be still able to move freely. I'm going to go with this version though and in the end of the video I'll explain why. For the pin I just have a nail. Both ends of the nail or pin or whatever get cut off flush with the nut. I sprayed two coats of lacquer on the wooden feet just to finish them a little bit. That's optional. And now I can already mount them. Now mounting the feet on the cabinet is quite simple. You just need to drill a hole that's bigger than the bolt you used in the center of the feet. The last step now is to thread on the second nut and then thread the foot into one steel plate. When you then have whatever piece it is at your final location, you can easily level it out. And when you're done, thread the second nut up to the steel plate and tighten it against it. And after that everything is absolutely solid, nothing is wiggling in any direction.
Now usually a cabinet is not as empty and light like this and maybe there's also machines sitting on and that needs to be leveled out. So there's a lot of weight on these leveling feet and then it gets quite difficult to turn this. But here you have a cross pin through this nut and that means you can grab it with a wrench and turn it with that with a lot of mechanical advantage. And then it's no problem again. We have these same leveling feet on our lathe cabinet and when we level out the lathe bed, everything was sitting in place already. There was no problem to turn these with a wrench. So now back to the question, why did I went with the solid version against the swiveling version? When you rotate these, they rub on the floor and sometimes even move the cabinet. So they seem way better. And actually, I made previous videos about these leveling feet and this was a viewer suggestion. So I wanted to try this in this video. But when I made the first test, I noticed that there is just too much play with standard hardware. So I was afraid that even when these feet are then locked down, that there still is play. And so maybe the whole cabinet isn't sitting completely solid. So that's why I went with this version. Of course, when adjusting the feet, the swiveling version is much nicer. Everything sits in place. And I think you could also do a better job of that if you make the washers yourself and make them a precise fit around the threads, then this would be perfect, I think. But I also think in the real world you only adjust such leveling feet once and then you never care about them again. So it's also okay to deal with them rubbing on the floor and maybe moving the cabinet. You only have to do it once and then it's good and everything is solid then. I also already made a few different versions of these leveling feet. One you just could saw on the lathe cabinet. They are used a slightly different way of mounting them to the cabinet. There's no threaded steel plate, so that's maybe a little easier to build. But I think with the threaded steel plate, that's my best version so far. If you have any better ideas, write them in the comments. I recently built a little tool stand. Uh, no. Now shopping for something like this is quite difficult because there, there, 